you can pop it on top. And if you get off the lights down as well, you get that perfect lava lamp feel. Okay, so today we're gonna to make one of those lava lamps you might have seen back in the late 1900s. And what we're gonna need for that is uh, a few bottles, some water, some food coloring of various shapes, sizes, and colors. We're gonna need some Alka-Seltzer as well, some vegetable oil, or any kind of oil will do. And then to make it look good, we're gonna have a torch as well. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the bottles as the lava lamp itself. So inside here, we're gonna fill it up with mostly oil. Around about three quarters oil is absolutely fantastic. So we'll, we'll unscrew that. If you've got a funnel, you can fill the oil up uh, using the funnel, or you can use a piece of paper to make a funnel as well. But if you're a pro like me, it just goes straight in like that. So all the way up to about three quarters. And then we can put this on the side. And then what we need to do is put the, uh, put the water in as well. You'll notice some weird things happen when we put the water in. Now you know that water and oil don't really mix. So when we put the water in, it's either gonna sit on the top or sink all the way to, to the bottom. Because like we said, they, they don't miss, they're immiscible fluids. And as we put it in, it'll make little blobs. And fill it up, not all the way to the top, but put a good glass full in. There we go. So we don't want to put it all the way to the top because we don't want the lava lamp overflowing. But you can see that there's little blobs of water inside this now, but they're all sinking to the bottom. And that's because water is actually less dense than the oil. It's actually heavier. So the heavier water sinks all the way to the bottom and creates a layer on the bottom. And after a while, after all these blobs have disappeared, you'll get then a nice layer across there. It's all to do with intermolecular polarity. So to make the lava lamp, what we need to do is start mixing those together. But at the moment, it doesn't look very good. It looks like oil and water. So we want to add a bit of color to it, and that's where the food coloring comes in. So if we take one of our food colorings, say the red one, if we put this in, uh, to our oil, this is also water-based, so it's not going to mix with the oil. It'll go right to the bottom and start mixing with the water. So about 10 drops of this go in. Or one big drop. So that'll go right down to the bottom and then start mixing with the water. And it'll make the water go red. And my fingers as well. Um, so that'll make the water go red, and then we need to stir that up. We can do it by shaking it, but we'll still have the, uh, the boundary between the water and the oil. It'll just be in loads of little bubbles around. But what we can do is introduce Alka-Seltzer into it. And Alka-Seltzer creates something called carbon dioxide. And that'll fizz, it'll come all the way to the top, and then it'll bring it all the way back down to the bottom again. This is one of my favorite science experiments because you can see the, the density of the, the water right on the bottom. You can see that the, the oil is actually lighter. And then when you drop the Alka-Seltzer in, the gas bubbles are even lighter again, so they all come to the top. To get that perfect uh, lava lamp feel, obviously you have to light it up. And these lights are great, but a torch is even better. So if you've got a torch that's nice and flat on the top, you can pop it on top. And if you can have the lights down as well, you get that perfect lava lamp feel. The nice red lava lamp. If it stops fizzing, just drop an extra Alka-Seltzer in. And as the gas bubbles rise to the top, you get that real lava lamp effect. And it's like you're transported back in time. So you can see the gases rise in up towards the top. Be careful it doesn't overflow and ruin your torch. This is going to do in a second. <laughs> and to make this a proper experiment, you can have a look at if it reacts differently with different temperatures. You can try with the, with the cap on as well. And what's better than one lava lamp? Three lava lamps. So if we have the lights back up, we've got one red one. So what we need is another two bottles. So 
Same again, three quarters of the way up with oil and a little bit of water in the top for it to mix with. And there you go, your very own range of lava lamps, which look great with a torch behind it, lighting them up. And that's how you make your very own lava lamp. Making our own lava lamp is distasteful and socially unacceptable, we know, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't subscribe to Head Squeeze, so do. I have a giant lamp in the shape of a rabbit. That's not really tasteful or acceptable to society either.